Last week, I discussed Arch Linux migrating its repos from SVN over to Git. Check out the video somewhere on the screen for the details on why that happened, why they used SVN for so long, and why they were using SVN in the first place. Now, following this last Friday in May, unlike what I said in the video, March, they actually began the migration. Now, I was hopeful. I wanted everything to go well and be a smooth transition. But I also understand that sometimes things can actually go wrong. And I'm not the only person who was just a tiny bit worried. This is when the migration start was announced on the mailing list. Hi all, I got my morning coffee ready and will now start disabling SSH slash SVN access and stop our rsync endpoint. For more details on the migration, please read the announcement email. Knocking on wood that this all goes smoothly. Let's hope all goes fine, fingers crossed. And I'm not the only person who was just a tiny bit worried. This is when the migration start was announced on the mailing list. Hi all, I got my morning coffee ready and will now start disabling SSH slash SVN access and stop our rsync endpoint. For more details on the migration, please read the announcement email. Knocking on wood that this all goes smoothly. Let's hope all goes fine, fingers crossed. Because look, no matter how many precautions you take, something unexpected can always happen. You can have a power router during some data transfer. You could have a shark nibble on one of the undersea cables. You could have an asteroid hit the data center where all of your servers are being stored. All of these things are entirely possible, albeit, you know, a little bit rare. So luckily, none of them happened, and two days later, it seemed like everything was good. Hi all, we just wanted to post a small update. Everything is going as planned so far. The most thrilling bits have been finished successfully and we are ahead of schedule. So far, only tiny things popped up that need to be taken care of. The new dev tooling was ready. The new user tooling was ready. The mirrors have been tested and it should, should be fine. So following this, 17 hours later, the migration was officially announced as complete. And as they said in the original announcement, this was posted onto the Arch Dev public mailing list. But as you can probably tell, most people do not read the Arch Linux mailing list. It's not just the Arch mailing list, most people just don't read mailing list. Tell me, if you're not a developer on a project, when was the last time you actually looked at a mailing list? I'm sure there's some of you, but you're kind of the exception at this point. So luckily someone either heard me, they had this plan already, regardless, it was posted outside of this as well. The first place, the Arch Linux newsfeed, and the second place, the Arch Linux subreddit. This is all I want from Arch Linux. I don't need anything more. When there is some really big news item, it requires manual intervention in a timely manner, post it onto the Arch news feed and cross post it over to the Reddit. This is all that is needed to make sure people understand what is actually happening on this distro. Anyway, let's look at the details. We are proud to announce that the migration to Git packaging succeeded. Thanks to everyone who has helped during the migration. Package sources are now available on GitLab. We'll have a look at this in just a bit. Note that the bug tracker is still Flyspray. This is the backend software being used on the existing Arch Linux bug tracker. I actually didn't bother to check what they were using last time. This is one of those rare programs that 1.0 is basically like the complete version, and it doesn't just keep updating infinitely into the future. Merge requests are not accepted as of now. We intend to open the issue tracker and merge requests on GitLab package repos in the near future. I don't know when that's going to happen. There's no ETA. No one's really talking about how quickly they intend to do it, but hopefully sometime in the next six months, a year, we'll have to wait and see. Mirrors are sinking again, but it may take a bit of time until your mirror of choice has caught up. Merge requests are not accepted 
as of now. We intend to open the issue tracker and merge requests on GitLab package repos in the near future. I don't know when that's going to happen. There's no ETA. No one's really talking about how quickly they intend to do it, but hopefully sometime in the next six months, a year, we'll have to wait and see. Mirrors are sinking again, but it may take a bit of time until your mirror of choice has caught up. This was a very important addition because I saw quite a few people in my Discord and quite a few people on Reddit being like, I can't update my system, my mirrors are out of date, and they're trying to update like three hours after the repos came back online. Just give it time and it should be good. As of the recording of this video and the uploading of this video, your mirrors should be good now. If they're not, find new mirrors because they're like three days out of date. Now, for the user, the migration is really simple. It's just Arch explains it in a really confusing way. They say, update your system and merge the pacman pacnu slash etsy slash pacmen.conf.pacnu file. This is required as we have moved the community repository into extra and get you to run this command here, basically doing a system update, making sure that pacman is this version or greater. But running this command is not going to fix your pacman.conf. All this is going to do is get you this file here. So what does it mean by merge? How are you supposed to merge it? This might sound like a dumb question if you know how to do it, but there are some users who didn't know what they were supposed to do here. Some people were even confused if they had to merge the file or if they could just go and edit the old pacman.conf. Okay, it's actually really simple. Inside of your Etsy directory, there's going to be your pacman.com. This is a file you've seen a bunch of times, but if you've done the update, you are also going to have pacman.conf.pacnu. This is also just a regular pacman.conf. Now, the reason why this file exists is if Arch Linux needs to make an update to your pacman.conf, they generally don't like overwriting config files. You might have a bunch of customization in there, and if they just overwrote it, you would lose all of that. So if there is an update, they instead store it in the .packnew variant. Now, this is used for other things in the Etsy directory as well, but for today, this is all we care about. Arch Linux does provide a tool for helping you go through these files, that being called packdiff. This is located in the pacman-contrib package. This will just automatically go through all of your pacnu files, letting you view them, merge them, remove the pacnu, and things like that. Now, this is a really over-engineered solution and will go through all of the pacnu files and really, you don't need it for what's going on here. For most people, that's literally everything you need to do. Take this bit right here and go, now you're done. Now, if you happen to be using the testing repo, this will need to be split into core dash testing and extra dash testing. The same is true for staging. This will need to be core dash staging and extra dash staging, but that only matters if you're using those repos. I know Arch is all about keeping things simple, but sometimes just saying a little bit extra will go a long way to making things simpler. Now, if you happen to be doing things messing around with the Arch build system, you will need to switch from ASP over to PKG CTL. This is done very, very simply. Just run this command and you'll be good. And for any of the Arch Linux packages out there, there are some extra things you need to do as well. That's not my area of expertise though, so I'm not sure if everything in here is everything you need to do. Now, one thing I wasn't sure about is how the packages would be handled on the GitLab. I'd heard they'd all have their own separate repos, but I wasn't entirely sure. Now we can see everything is just in a giant list in the packages subgroup. Not even broken up into like the core, extra, and things like that. It is just every single package. So if I search for something like Ranger, I will find Ranger. If I search for something like Linux, I will find the kernel in a moment. It's a little bit slow because there is a lot of things in here. It makes it very easy to find whatever package I need to find. 
one thing that is kind of weird is if we go to the individual repos, obviously the issues and merger quests aren't open yet. They're not actually being used. But if we go back to the group, they are open here. I don't know if this is a limitation of how you can configure GitLab's UI. I don't know if this is something they forgot to disable. Either way, though, if someone involved in the Arch team happens to see this, just a heads up that that is currently there. And it seems like I would be able to make an issue, but you're not accepting issues right now. Whilst it seems like everything has gone relatively well for the migration, I do have a very minor criticism. So if you go into Google, Brave, any other search engine you want to use, and you search for a package that was available in the Arch community repo, say LF, say Ranger, because of search engine caching, it'll now link you to a dead page. They don't do any sort of redirect, even though the package is still available in art, it's just been moved over to extra, so you get this instead. I say it's minor because over time things like this will disappear, but probably for a month or a couple of months, this is gonna be happening. Also, the latest version of the Arch Linux ISO is from earlier this month, prior to the migration being done. So while Pac-Man installed onto your system is going to be set up correctly, Pac-Man in the ISO is going to have an out-of-date config file. It's going to think community still exists, which shouldn't cause a problem because there is going to be a fake version of the repo available for some time into the future, but also, if you want to install something from testing, you can't just go and uncomment the testing repo. You need to go and add in core testing and extra testing, which is a slight extra step when installing Arch. It's not a big deal. Most people are not installing testing or staging packages when they're first setting up their system, and it won't be a problem in two weeks when the new ISO comes out. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. From my understanding, all of the like sub distros based on Arch, they've done the migration perfectly fine. So there's not even really anything to say there. If anyone has an exception to that, please do let me know. But uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I said that already. Um, do you use Arch? Do you not use Arch? Why are you watching this video if you don't use Arch? Maybe you just like my voice for some reason. I don't know why, but um, let me know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly Bear, Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out. <laughs>